I just came across a high income ETF that since inception has not only been able to outperform the S&P 500, but has also been able to outperform almost every other high income ETF that I've talked about, including JEPI, SVOL, and Devo, and not to mention majority of passive dividend ETFs like SCHD, VYM, and DGRO, while still providing a dividend yield of 5.5%. And the best part is that this ETF may potentially be an amazing complement to another very popular high income ETF, JEPQ. I mean, a total match made in heaven. And this is why I wanted to talk about it today because it potentially presents an amazing opportunity for dividend investors and retirees. But there is something very different about the CTF and this is where things get really interesting. So pay very close attention and make sure you stick around until the end because you don't want to miss it. And this brings me to IDVO, which is the Amplify International Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. This is the first international ETF that I've decided to cover. And the reason I wanted to focus on this one today is not only because of its performance, but to also showcase the potential benefits it can provide. Now, to begin, we all know that majority of people are invested in the US markets. And high income ETFs like JEPI and JEPQ, they track the S&P 500 index or the NASDAQ 100 index, which are solely focused on US equities. But the international markets host some of the strongest performing stocks in the world, from technology stocks, pharmaceutical stocks, industrial stocks, energy stocks, etc. And many of them have been top performing companies around the world. So in my opinion, missing out on these companies is a big mistake. Now, if you guys are enjoying this content and find it helpful, please do me a little favor and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out my channel and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. Let's move on. Now, there are two key benefits I see when investing in international markets. The first and probably the most important one is that international markets can move independently of the US markets. And while there can be correlations between global markets due to factors like geopolitical events and investor sentiment, each market does operate within its own unique set of circumstances. And the biggest example right now is interest rate cuts. As the US is still waiting to do their first rate cut, many European countries have already started, including Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, even the Bank of England is signaling rate cuts sooner than the US. And this lack of correlation at times can be a perfect hedge for a portfolio. Right here, IDVO's performance gives you the perfect example of a lack of correlation. You can see that when all the other dividend ETFs in the US were trading flat, IDVO completely veered away from the overall trend. And the second biggest reason is access to growth opportunities. Some of the best examples of this are companies like Novo Nordisk, TSMC, ASML, etc. Now, Novo Nordisk is a Danish pharmaceutical company, which is responsible for the invention of Ozempic. And this drug has taken over the entire world, massively boosting the company's sales and revenue. Fun fact, Novo Nordisk's market cap is now larger than the GDP of Denmark, which is where it's headquartered. It's also one of the fastest growing companies within the entire markets, and it's still growing at a staggering pace. But you also have major players in the technology sector, like TSMC and ASML. These guys are the key players in the AI movement because they manufacture chips and they create the equipment that is used to create these insane AI processors. And without them, this AI boom would not exist. So overall, there's a lot of benefits in targeting international equities. And for dividend investors who are primarily focused on consistency, steady growth, and low volatility, this could be an amazing avenue to achieve this. And IDVO is the perfect example of a very powerful dividend ETF that's provided exceptional growth at the same time. Now, I'm sure that IDVO sounds awfully familiar, and that is because it is the international version of DIVO, which is the Amplify CWP Enhanced Income ETF. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly suggest that you do, and you can check it out right here. As always, all of these charts and graphs are from Seeking Alpha. And if you want to take advantage of these amazing tools with Seeking Alpha, then make sure you grab their offer before it's gone. You can get $50 off their premium plan by signing up through my link in the description down below. So IDVO is basically DIVO's international cousin, and they use the exact same investing technique. So everything that made Devo fantastic also applies to IDVO. The only difference is that it holds a different set of stocks. And this is what really takes the ETF over the top. Okay, so to begin, I'm briefly going to run through the fundamentals so that you can get a better understanding of the ETF before moving forward. IDVO was established in September of 2022, 
So it is extremely new. And currently the ETF only has around $140 million of assets under management. Now the fund's low AUM is something to keep in mind because it means that the fund is not very liquid. And funds that have low liquidity are subject to high transaction fees when buying in and out of shares. But of course, that can change over time as the fund grows. When you look at the fund's holding breakdown, you see a rather even allocation between financial stocks, energy stocks, and consumer cyclical stocks. And with communication, industrial technology, and healthcare making up the rest. But pay very close attention here because this is what I feel can give the CTF an edge and potentially serve as a perfect complement. When you look at the fund's total return since inception, like I said, it's outperformed the S&P 500 and its US cousin Debo, but it's also been able to outperform very prominent high income ETFs like JEPI, SPYI, and passive ETFs like SCHD. Now, notice how we left out JEPQ, and this is because this is the only ETF that has been able to outperform IDVO, although it's really not by much. However, remember that JEPQ is heavily concentrated in the growth sector, Around 50% of the entire ETF is made up of big name technology stocks because it reflects the NASDAQ 100. But IDVO and JEPQ have had almost the exact same growth even though IDVO barely holds any technology stocks. This is where the true strengths come to light. If you have an ETF that is able to replicate the growth of a tech-focused ETF without the heavy allocation in tech, then you are getting an amazing complementary investment. Because even though international markets move separately of the US markets, they still reflect each other in terms of things like sector trends. So for example, the tech sector can be subject to extreme volatility as it is the primary sector that is subject to the highest growth potential. But sectors like consumer defensive, energy, and communication are not going to be subject to the same levels of volatility. They consist of cash flow positive companies that are always going to be in demand. So this is what had me thinking that IDVO could be an amazing complement to JEPQ. In a downward trend where JEPQ could suffer quite a bit, IDVO could potentially minimize that, while in an upward trend, they both prosper. Don't forget that you're getting a 9% yield from one and almost a 6% yield from the other. Okay, so how does IDVO work? Like I said, IDVO uses the exact same strategy as DIVO. And for those who didn't see that video, this ETF combines the dividends distributed from its underlying holdings with the premium income that it generates through covered calls. So around 3 to 4% of the fund's yield is a result of its holdings, and 2 to 4% is a result of its options activity. The fund manager is strategically using only 20% of the fund's assets to sell covered calls, and leaves the remaining 80% to appreciate in value like a regular ETF. Now, you are getting two very amazing benefits with this fund. For one, because only 20% of the fund's assets are used for its options activity, the ETF is able to showcase very powerful capital appreciation. When we look at the fund's price return, which excludes its dividend yield, it is almost in line with the S&P 500. And then when you add the dividends on top of it, you're getting an even stronger performance. And secondly, it's going to have a very consistent dividend yield, which is extremely important for income investors and retirees. Many investors want a yield that is predictable and doesn't fluctuate a lot. And because half of the fund's yield is coming from its underlying holdings, it's going to be very consistent. That is why when you look at the fund's dividend distribution history, you see that it is almost the same every time, with just a little bit of fluctuation because the income from the options activity can fluctuate depending on volatility. And I've talked about this before, but this relation is called Vega, and it is why high income ETFs like JEPI and JEPQ have dividend yields that fluctuate a lot. This ETF also distributes its dividends on a monthly basis as opposed to a quarterly basis like regular passive ETFs. And this gives investors the opportunity to regularly dollar cost average and take advantage of the compounding effect. So overall, you can see that this ETF has amazing great benefits. And the fact that it is not a tech focused high income ETF, but still manages to capture the same growth as a tech focused high income ETF. This is what in my opinion makes it a great complementary investment. Now, this video wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about some of its downsides. For one, it has a pretty high expense ratio of 0.66%. 
Now, Devo has a 0.56% expense ratio. So it's practically the same, but I think that the fund managers maybe just have to compensate for higher transaction fees when investing in international equities. The second is of course, it's lack of history. Because the fund was established very recently, we can't really get an accurate reading of how the fund will perform in varying economic conditions. And this is in my opinion, the biggest risk because at the end of the day, historical performance is what solidifies a fund. So we will need to wait and see how the CTF continues to perform. And I will definitely be keeping my eye on it and revisit it once again, because so far it has been able to provide some exceptional returns. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.